Alright. We're on. We're on. Welcome We're on. everyone to Mixed Talk, where we discuss <laughs> all things nostalgic and retro, but still very relevant to the world in which we live in today. My name is Johnny Freaking Rico. I want to thank everyone for, for being here. We are welcoming a new year, a new podcast. And we have a new face to our Mixed Talk team. We all would like to introduce Crazy Pac-Man. Hey, guys. How you doing? <laughs> Can you tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself, Crazy Pac-Man? Uh, well, I got to say, um, I am a, um, I guess, everybody, hello. Uh, how's everybody doing? I am Crazy Pac-Man. I am one of many variety streamers on Twitch. Uh, I hail from uh, Southern California. Uh, I love playing Tetris. Uh, I love playing Mario games, Zelda games, and uh, Overwatch 2, and other games that are either retro, current, and maybe just too many to name. Um, other than that, on my spare time, I, I enjoy keeping up with sports, mainly basketball, baseball, and uh, I like to binge watch shows on streaming services, um, mainly on either Disney Plus or Prime Video. And also, I'm I'm also an MCU movie enth uh, enthusiast, and I am a low key pro wrestling fanatic. So that's my little spiel. He's so. everything under the sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You fit right in, perfect. Oh, well, hey, you. welcome. <laughs> well, we're very happy to have you have you with us, uh, well, Crazy um, Pac-Man. It's an honor to be with you guys. Thank you very much. Absolutely. <laughs> um, the rest of our uh, panel members. Let me introduce Annie Talks. Show. Hello, Annie. everybody. Annie. Hello, everybody. My name is Annie Talk Show. If you're new, aka Annie Talks. Um, I am also a variety streamer. I started out on Twitch Sings, and then actually, no, I keep saying that. I, I say Twitch Sings is what got me on the map, basically. But I did just chatting talk shows and podcasts, which is you know why we're here. Um, and then started uh, streaming on Twitch, and I met all these lovely, wonderful people and have uh, garnered really great friendships with each of them. Um, I have a very active Discord. I also have, I'm, I'm a gamer, I guess, mm, to some respect. Um, to, be sh to, to be fair, the only game I ever really like to play, you guys know, is Valorant. <laughs> Valorant. Um, I love Valorant. I may not be good at it, but I think I'm getting better. Hey. Um, I also play Overwatch, some Fortnite, um, and we've been playing a lot of Switch games lately. Pac-Man and I have been kind of busy on on uh, Switch playing some of the really retro games. Um, uh, Tetris, of course. Uh, mm. Tetris, what else would we play? Donkey Kong? OMG, made me laugh so hard. And um, <laughs> tennis, like legit, you know, you think about Pong. Uh, this is like as retro as you can get for tennis. So we've been playing a lot of that. But oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I'm also a uh, YouTube content creator. Um, so I've done everything pretty much under the sun. I have a podcast of other podcasts that I've done as well and very active in on, on Twitch. Um, not as active as I'd like to be, but here I am. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys having me. And thank you for uh, indulging in my creative process. So, yay. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. Always awesome to have you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, our next panelist, DJB, DJB Remix. Tell us hey. about yourself, DJB. Yeah, sure, sure. What's up, everybody? My name is DJB. You can catch me at twitch.tv slash DJB underscore remix. <laughs> I am from the San Francisco Bay Area, a broadcast and XR technician by day. And once upon a <laughs> once up on a blue moon, I will be streaming. <laughs> but I do stream seasonally these days. I'm part of the Fam Bam uh, production team that is in its sixth season coming up now. Fam Bam uh, Six is an OCE this time around and is launching uh, in two weeks. Wow! Yeah, so be sure to actually. I'm sorry. Next week. <laughs> It's already March. March is next week, right? Anyway, um, yeah, be sure to keep an eye out for that. And uh, yeah, happy to be here. Oh, I mean, also just as far as like retro stuff, I've been a gamer since way back the Super Nintendo days, and uh, and and that's that's just it's been it's been part of me ever since. All right. Nice. Yay. <laughs> All right, TJB. 
Our next panelist, Rizaline Riz, Hi. Rizaline B. Hi. How you doing? Hi, I'm good. Hey, Riz. Uh, we're a little discombobulated because this is not yeah. our regular setup. I feel so off. Uh, there's like a bunch of lamps and chairs and things all around us. Um, but I, I don't really stream. I'm just here. I'm just they, here. They just, <laughs> <laughs> they just, they just brought me on. I'm like, sure, I, I speak words. Um, but I, my background is in marketing, and uh, by by nighttime, I scroll endlessly on TikTok. So, if you want me to send you some choice memes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I am a child of the, the 90s and the 2000s, and I like all things pop culture, so nice. I am excited to be here. So so basically, you're retro, nostalgic, and still relevant. To yeah, you. I'm totally relevant. <laughs> <laughs> you fit so right awesome. in. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, my name is Johnny Frickin' Rico. I am a Southern California video game streamer. Not so much streamer lately. I am a content creator. I love technology. More recently, I have begun to get my certification as a mechanic. So I'm taking classes for my certification. But my passion right now is to restore classic Japanese automobilia exotica. That's what I like to call it. Wow, <laughs> that sounds I'm, fancy. Just my back cars? is killing me. I, I've just been doing a head <laughs> gasket job. So um, on a classic 1991 Honda CRX SI. Wow, fancy. Um, so I'm in a lot of pain. You can't tell, but I'm in a lot of pain right now. But it's okay. It's all good. I am a child from the fabulous 1980s. I love most all things retro. I'm also a fan of the horror film genre. And that's me, Johnny Freaking Rico. I'm glad to, to be with you guys. Okay. It's been a while. It has. <laughs> it has been. Okay, well. I'm I'm so, very thankful for everybody for being here. I know that we took a really big break. Sorry, Johnny, didn't mean to step on your toes. Okay. I know we took a really big break during the holidays, right after TwitchCon. You got, those of you know, I, I got sick twice and flu and, and then COVID and then then you know, holidays happen. So this was the perfect time to come back. So here we are today after a very long hiatus. Take it away, Johnny. <laughs> we are back. So today our topic for this episode of Mixed Talk Live is video games then and now. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have an icebreaker question for each of our panelists and we are going to start. Uh, this is our icebreaker question. What is your most treasured video game or video game experience? We're going to start with Crazy Pac-Man. Oh, okay. Well, um, all right. Let's see my my most treasured video game. Um, you know there are actually different kinds of tre most treasured video games. It's kind of a, a mixture of like most valuable in terms of price, most played, um, and even both. So I decided, you know, I I would actually say that my most treasured video game in which I used to play a lot, and as of right now, it's really high in value. I'd say it's Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the PS, uh, PS2. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. I Good used one. to play that like on the arcades, and as soon as I found out, hey, like back in the day, I, I'd go to a local GameStop, and all, all of a sudden I see that game like on the wall, and I'm like, oh, dude, I gotta get it. I, I have to get this. So back then, it was like only like, 40 bucks. I was like, why not? You know, it'll save me a bunch of quarters. So, um, <laughs> quarters. so yes, so I, till this day, I still have the game, but I don't have a PS2 to play it with. So, um, man, it just, it, it just brings me so much memories of playing it on the arcades. And, you know, it's just nothing better than having to play it at home without, you know, having to spend so much quarters and, uh, deal with people like right next to you who you're trying to really, really wallop, you know, uh, <laughs> It's it's great. I, got I mean, next, it's just bro. I got next, bro. yeah, and and also yeah, and also it's there's just a lot of nostalgia too. You know, it's, uh, playing with my uh, my friends and especially my brother. I, we we used to play a lot of fighting games and oh man, they're like this brother and brother rivalry kind of deal. That's it just brings me a lot uh, brings back a lot of memories. And um, 
yeah, and just not only that I used to play it a lot, not only that it cost a lot, it's just just so much like that I remember you know playing that type of game, and uh, yeah, <laughs> that was a <laughs> lot. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, uh, Annie, um, same question for you, Annie. Uh, what is your most treasured video game? Oh my God, that's a trick question. Be video game experience. Okay, so as a kid, my brother and I, OMG, we were like, we lived only about two and a half blocks away, maybe three, um, to uh, Alpine Village. If you guys know where that is, Alpine Village is in South Bay, um, LA County. So anyways, um, I used to live there and we used to just every day, every day, whether it be after school or every day during the summer, we would always go to the arcade at the, at, at the Alpine village. And our, the, the game that my brother played the most was asteroids. And, you know, he would always like get stacks of quarters and put them on, you know, he'd line up his quarters up along the panel basically so that he always had next basically. Um, and then my prized game at the time was Centipede, which I absolutely, absolutely loved. Um, so that was then. Now my favorite game, as you guys know, is Valorant. But um, but I'm a noob, honestly, when it comes to gaming, per se. I've only been gaming, honestly, for what, maybe two years-ish? Um, I feel like I'm getting better. Man, I'll tell you, the first time trying to learn the, the keyboard, like learn the AWSD and the back and forth and <laughs> was killer <laughs> and i was like oh my gosh i wanted to throw it out the wall or at out the door but now you, you if you try to give me a joystick which we've experienced you guys last night i could not use the joystick for nothing so it's the yeah it's it's just trying to get used to the pc versus you know joystick and that or joy cons whatever so um, my experience goes back far really really far i'm so much I'm like a dinosaur compared to you guys. So I, I literally feel like my, my experience goes back way, way, way back. So, but my most treasured and memorable moments were spending with my brother at the arcade. Yeah. Well, okay. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> uh, j just for everyone on stream. So, you know, I am not crazy Pac-Man. He is to my left. Oh. <laughs> Our names got a little combobulated here and mm -hmm. Johnny is not down there. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'll fix it. Okay. Johnny's right here, but it's okay. Just, just, just letting everyone know. <laughs> it's okay. And uh, yes, I do have dual personalities, guys, so I'm both DJ and Rizzling. <laughs> so, um, Wait, lit. it changed! <laughs> Low key. <laughs> okay okay uh, you guys thanks. it's okay it's we okay. stayed wait a minute we stayed in okay. in in the hall in the waiting room per se for 10 minutes and nobody could tell me then oh my god <laughs> <laughs> it's all good it's all good uh, hey old okay, school uh, playhouse okay sorry. also too i just want to mention um everyone in chat we'd like to hear what you have to say too what is your most treasured video game or video game experience um We'd love to hear what you have to say as well. Yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, DJB Remix, what is your most treasured video game? Yeah. Okay, I think I'll go for the experience answer. Uh, I've talked a lot about my stream already, about my favorite video game of all time, and it always will be, and I have a lot of like deep connections to the game Chrono Trigger on the Super Nintendo. That oh, will yeah. always be my favorite video game of all time. Uh, 1996... Uh, was a great year for video games. Anyway, but um, my most treasured video game experience, I'd have to go with a recent one, honestly. Like, I would say it was on Valorant <laughs> and getting a win in round one on in Fam Bam 5. Wow. In the last NA tournament. Yeah. And, and, and I, I mean, and I, I, I know that's kind of kind of sounds a little like uh, selfish or whatever or like uh, self-promoting <laughs> like yeah self-promoting but what i re but you know what like valorant is something that i've been streaming more than anything on twitch these days and it's it's kind of like been my staple um but it's never been a game that i ever really felt like i was really interested in being competitive in or a game that I was ever really interested. Anybody that knows, anybody who plays with me knows, I don't play comp in Valorant. I just mm -hmm. don't. I don't. I don't need a symbol to tell me to define me. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. So, 
I love that. Anyway. That's a great mentality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, just the fact that, I, uh, and also Fab Man was a kind of a passion project of mine and a lot of other people involved. So all that coming together and then getting a win round one um, against a really dope team to Uwe Fiasco. Really, really great guys too. It was it was probably one of my favorite experiences on Twitch, um, if not you know, uh, uh, ever in uh, playing video games. So, yeah. nice. I want to give me a positive experience, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take it where I can, where I can get it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, uh, Rizaline. So, what is your most treasured <laughs> video game or video game experience? It could be you know. I used to play air hockey with my dad, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. You know what I mean? It's Aww. it's that's a game too. I mean, it's <laughs> mm -hmm. that's true. Um, so I mean, I said that I'm not really much of a gamer, but I have played through a couple of games, and I was trying to like remember, like I like like the the choose your own adventure story kind of stuff. I'm not good at like the pew pew, the pew, pew pews, but I like to like <laughs> like. Press, press triangle, press, like, simple. Um, with that said, I the game that came to mind um, that I enjoyed playing through was um, Six Beyond Two Souls. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. With um, uh, Elliot, Elliot Page and who else is it? Like, Willem Dafoe or something? Yeah. Like, I just, <laughs> um, and I, I, I mean, and I, and I played this on um, his console. But um, it was it was satisfying to just take the time to like go through the whole story and like get into the character and it was it was like like kind of like a movie like a um it was so that was that was fun and I liked this I thought the story was interesting um so I should I should get back into like taking some time to just. Anyone has recommendations on Valorant? Like Just kidding. If Valorant had a choose your own story, all <laughs> oh, right. Your own story. But, yeah, that I like. I don't have very many experiences with video games, <clears> but that's a that's definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Love it. So if if <laughs> anyone has any questions, what about um, you? Annie, Annie loves Valorant. She should have a T-shirt that says "Valorant, always Valorant, <laughs> forever Valorant," <laughs> and a matching hat. And <laughs> uh, I need to be sponsored okay. by Valorant. Okay. Or you can just you can just have a shirt that says "Viper Main" with an arrow. There you <laughs> For Viper real, Main. forever. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm kind of on the fence, just like uh, Crazy Pac-Man, where there's so many games that are some of my favorites. But what really stands out in my mind uh, growing up from a kid from the 80s is uh, when I met my best friend at the time, we started playing Double Dragon in the arcade. Mm, and, oh, yeah. and the cool thing about the game Double Dragon was, and I always think it's, it's, it's amazing, the way the co-op works. It was the first game where one of the players can grab the bad guy and hold him you know, from behind, and then the other player starts pounding him, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That co-op experience that it, it provided, uh, while there was probably some games that offered co-op, but it was more like, you play, now it's your turn to play. You play, now it's your turn to play. This was actually an experience where both of you could tag team and beat up all the bad guys. And I always thought that that experience with it and the, the real co-op type of game was amazing. And I, that one always sticks out in my mind. The, the music, the graphics at the time were phenomenal. Um, Double Dragon in the arcade. Mm -hmm. That's probably my favorite game when I think of gaming experience in the 80s. Very cool. <clears throat> okay, so our topic today is video games then and now. Now, the earliest video game version of Pong was released back in 1972. For the past 50 years, video games have evolved from basic programs offering endless hours of entertainment to coin-op experiences to massive multiplayer online experiences with entire communities. 
And now with virtual reality, the sky really is the limit with the potential that video games can have on our collective state of mind, as well as the massive effect video games have in our pop culture. What are your most treasured experiences with video games? How do you, how do you see the changes in how video games are produced and created? And how has the gaming experiences changed for you over the last 50 years? Okay, so wow. we're going to move on to our panel questions where one of our panelists is going to um, give a question about this topic of video games then and now. And we are going to start with Annie Talk Show. Oh, Annie. hey. Okay, so my question is a twofold question. So think about it long and hard, y'all. My question is um, who introduced you to video games and who is your favorite gamer today? Think about it. Think about it. Um, I can start with mine if you'd like. Um, in, who introduced me to video games was my brother, obviously. Um, and uh, he, he wouldn't let me. He wouldn't let me play Asteroids. And I was so mad at him. I'm like, why? He goes, because you're not good. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, how, how am I supposed to get good or get better if you don't let me play? But... He, you know, because he was my only sibling um, and older, of course, you know, the younger, the, you know, the, the, the younger sibling always wants to outdo the older sibling, I guess. Um, I, that was me. I always wanted to, to be the one to beat him. So I knew I couldn't beat him in Asteroids, so I had to beat him in something that I felt like I could play, which to me at the time was Centipede. Um, so we spent a lot of time at the arcade but we also spent, you know, convinced my parents to buy, um, I think it was a Nintendo. Don't ask me which version because I <laughs> cannot tell you. Or we even had the Sega. So we, we had a two, no, no, oh, I'm sorry, Atari. So we went from Atari to Nintendo and then Sega later. But um, so when we brought those consoles home, I was able to play and, you know, get better. So those were joysticks then at the time they were like legit joysticks not the kind of joysticks that you guys see today um and then in terms of who my favorite gamer is today i don't really have one because i don't really watch a lot of gamers um on stream um but i've been watching um i don't know if you guys know it's ryan higa he, he used to be a um youtuber um in fact just just about hours before today's stream i was watching him earlier um, I just like his game style, his gameplay. He's very calm, collected, right? Um, and he just loves Valorant, and that's like his game. So, um, um, and I, I don't necessarily watch him for tips. I just watch him for just, you know, how the ease of the game and how, how it comes to him. And I'm hoping that sometime, sometime soon, I'll be in that same game state. So he's right now currently my favorite person to watch. Okay. Awesome. So who who do you want to answer it next, Annie? <laughs> oh, what? <clears throat> so don't you guys want to answer that question? Yeah, Come on. I do. Uh, let's do. see. I'll tag Team Rizzling. Okay. Okay, the question was, uh, who, <laughs> <laughs> who introduced you? Who introduced you to gaming? Yeah. And then, um, Who's your favorite gamer? Notable favorite gamer. Ah. So, uh, are you trying? Are you guessing? Okay. Um. So my household, we didn't really grow up with video games. My parents didn't get that stuff for us. Um. But we had a relative, like a grandpa, uncle, who got us a Wii. So that that changed everything for us, and we had that plugged into our TV and had those remotes strapped and ready and mm -hmm. we're doing all the stuff and got all the Wii sports and the just dance um so that was i mean that's that's my those that's my early memory of video games um i mean my brother i think he, he must have had like a booty like pc or laptop or something and he he got like a cd-rom version of like halo or something like he dug out of a bin of like the store there was that uh, and then, and then we had those. We had the like, like the the bootleg. It's from the Philippines, and you plug it in with like the yellow and the white and the red 
plug into the TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's, it's, it's like a, it's just yeah, RCA. Yeah. But like super basic. Yeah. Pixelated game. <laughs> pixelated. It, it was like, it was like, <laughs> maybe, was maybe, but it was like, maybe it's kind of like on a, like a karaoke machine, but instead of karaoke, it plays the game. Uh, <laughs> no, my weird. That is that's my, and then I mean, and then eventually, I got a switch for myself, and and then, and then I I haven't touched my switch ever since. But um, <clears throat> but um, I've been, I've been using your you, switch. You have. <laughs> um, notable gamers. I mean, I mean, you already know the answer to this question. Like, uh, well, I mean, I could, yeah, I mean, I could, I mean, oh. I know, I like, I know a bunch of people on Twitch that stream and game, and everybody's amazing, and I, I love everybody. Who's your number um, one? <laughs> DJ. You. Uh. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Because, I, well, I mean, what comes to mind is, like, those, like, content creator people. And I'm like, I don't know. You like that Daz guy. Daz? Yeah. Daz guy. Yes. Okay, fine. Sure. I can say that. Thank you for giving me an answer. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I, I mean, he must have been on, like, Vine also. And, like, he's, I do like watching people play, like, horror games. And they get they get scared and I get scared vicariously. But I haven't yeah, his name is Daz Gaines and he's like a British guy. Um and he like I think his his streams like he like he must have his setup in his closet because behind him is just like like racks of clothes. But yeah, Daz Gaines. That's true. I do like playing. I mean, yeah, and there's like a lot of there's a lot of people that aren't mainly gamers that have started to stream on Twitch, like especially like in the pandemic. Like a lot of like rest like WG WWE wrestlers like started doing that. Mm. Um so I could go into I could we could go into a list of like wrestlers that have started gaming. But yeah, my answers are kind of fragmented because it's not I'm not a cliche in that way. I'm with you, so <laughs> all good, great. Who do you want to tag team, um, oh, Riz? Um, who didn't answer yet? Uh, Johnny. Uh, okay. So I have to say, who introduced me to video games? It's my dad, actually. Oh. My dad was awesome. Okay, my dad. He, um, I think the first video game we ever played as kids, me and my sister. He, he had one of those tank games where you have the little handles for oh, each tank, two of them. Right. And you like hot wire to the TV and you would go around. And I think it was black and white. It was really old. Um, and I remember playing that. We just had a blast with that game. Nice. And that was probably my first introduction to video games was at home. And, you know, my dad was always getting us into computers and stuff like that. So it was... Um, we were always at the the pinnacle of technology and games and gaming mm -hmm. at an early age. Um, as far as who is my favorite gamer today, if we're talking game stream stream gamer, um, it's Doctor Disrespect. Who oh. doesn't love Doctor Disrespect? <laughs> now he oh, got yeah. kicked off of Twitch because Twitch didn't want to pay him or whatever. Yeah. He's very controversial. He's on YouTube, but there's very few streamers that puts as much resources, uh, creativity, it, just in the little cuts, the little cut segments he has where he's driving his fake car. You know, uh, there's nobody that's that entertaining. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's more entertaining to watch what he says and the reactions than it is to watch him play. But he is a really good gamer, though, without a doubt. Nice. So it would be Doctor Disrespect Very on cool. YouTube. He he's he was never ever come, able to come back to Twitch, was he? No. Yeah. He was banned. In fact, if you were let's say you were to do a stream with him, Annie, like yeah. he's gonna join you and you're streaming on Twitch, they will ban you. Oh my god, no way. They don't want him <laughs> anything involved oh, with Twitch at all. Twitch MG. just Yeah. 
salty. Twitch laid down the band hammer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the band hammer and a half. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it really sucks because he's one of the few streamer, the big streamers that stayed with Twitch. Right, right. You know, when Ninja and some of the others jumped ship right. for that Microsoft, you know, debacle that happened. Okay, moving on. I am going to pick oh. DJB Remix. Oh. Um, who introduced me to gaming is kind of a hard answer because uh, um, uh, I would say the grocery store Rayleigh's introduced me to gaming. <laughs> What? what you know like <laughs> <laughs> what i want <laughs> the grocery store what Rayleigh's? Rayleigh's. Rayleigh's. Yeah. so my my, oh, parent, my, okay. my dad my dad was always hardcore asian dad like my parents didn't want me playing video games when i was younger right mm. and uh um uh, there was just one Christmas where Rayleigh's, if this is when the Super Nintendo had just dropped, you know, it was like 1992, I guess. There was one Christmas uh, that uh, Rayleigh's was doing like a, a, um, a raffle or whatever. You go do, get your groceries there, you'll, you'll win a Super Nintendo. Like some people will win a Super Nintendo if they join the raffle. And mm. so I, wanted, I asked my dad, can we join the raffle? Mm. And, and, you know, I just. Even though, like, as a kid, I didn't know what the odds were or whatever. Like, most people don't win those things. Right. You know? <laughs> mm. But I just, uh, I hoped I would win. And so, um, you know, I, I remember asking my dad every day if, like, uh, if they had, did they release yeah. the, the raffle or whatever. Anyway, so, yeah, my dad told me one, one day, like, oh, yeah, I, I saw it on the paper or whatever. Or I saw it at, at Rayleigh's that they, um, that, no, you didn't win. I was like, oh. You're lying. Huh. No, he wasn't lying. Oh, I, I was waiting I, for. I, I didn't. Win. Oh. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, huh. like, come that Christmas, because you know, I guess I was so disappointed. My parents got me a Super Nintendo, even though you know they didn't know they don't. They didn't know what video games were. They didn't have video games. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was that was me getting my first video game console. I was I. I rarely got to play any video games at all even until until that so that was how i got introduced Aww. to video games well it got you <laughs> excited about it you know what i mean even though you didn't, didn't yeah. win it's that oh, yeah. there's a chance that's, you know it's like the golden good. ticket from Willy wonka you know <laughs> it's like we were there was a chance yeah. Rizal, you know, everyone has the same chance as me right yeah Rizaline and i were waiting for the the other shooter drop we thought oh you won <laughs> but no <laughs> Darn. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, that's the reason why I wanted that that, that Super Nintendo. I was my dad, okay, my dad and my mom were like, all right, well, right. we'll get him this for Christmas. Didn't they get you, like, the wrong kind of game, though? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yes, they did. They got me Bible Adventures for the <laughs> regular Nintendo. <laughs> I can't see that before. My parents wanted me to play <laughs> things. <laughs> So they got me Bible Adventures for the regular Nintendo, which didn't even work for the Super Nintendo. So did they return but it? Or... luckily, the Super Nintendo came with Super Mario World. Ah, oh, <laughs> there you go. That's a pack-in. Okay, that's yeah. a pack-in <laughs> game, if there ever to, was one. Right. To quickly add on to that Bible game, I, I believe that's a very valuable game up until this point. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a valuable game. Yeah. If you... um. If I don't know if you have it. <clears throat> if you watch the YouTuber, the Angry Video Game Nerd, he does a whole, yeah. he does a whole episode on Bible games, and it's that game you're talking about, DJ. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah. I've heard about I, I, it, and it looks <laughs> boring. Is it? <laughs> oh, it was. Trust me, it was. It brought back so many memories, though. Like, anyway, uh, and and as uh, as far as like my favorite gamer, AVGN would be up there because he's a I, I I love his his stuff, but. I also would say uh, video game Donkey. Oh, yeah. Uh, Donkey is, his, his videos are hilarious. Uh, I, I oh, love his yeah. commentary. Uh, and I also think that he makes very good like video, uh, video game reviews, like actually intelligent reviews, but also <laughs> super hilarious at the same time. Cool. Yeah, Donkey's great. Nice. And okay, awesome. Uh, I think yeah. Let's uh, Wait. make uh, Crazy Pac-Man. <laughs> yeah. Crazy Pac-Man. 
All right. Uh, <laughs> since I got like all this time to think about it. Uh, okay. So who introduced <laughs> me to video games? Um, so first off, um, who introduced me to video games? Actually, to owning one. Uh, my first console, which is the NES. Um, my dad actually got me my what? first NES. But oh. here's the thing: like, I didn't know how to go about the video games at in a very, uh, very young age. So he played it most of the time. <laughs> So, um, what really, really introduced, I mean, I played a little bit of Mario, but like, you know, I didn't, uh, you know, I wasn't really good at it, um, at that time, but, um, but who actually really introduced me to video games with, you know, a, like a vast variety would be my best friends back in the day, uh, Dennis and Brian. Um, they, they played a whole variety of, you know, baseball games. They also played, uh, Mario and, um. Back in the days, oh, fighting games. They they played a lot of Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. I mean, they in, they introduced me to those kind of games, and I started playing it. I started getting my um, my dexterity into you know into those games, and I just suddenly became like a fan of it. And they were they were the kinds of people who I remember where they used to have the Nintendo Sega Wars. They're those kind of kids who got both the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. And I was that kind of kid too, so that kind of influenced uh, influenced me into doing that. Oh, and, you spoiled children! <laughs> yeah. So I mean, spoiled consoles. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it kind of introduced me video games to that from that standpoint, and like just a vast variety of what I could play, you know. And yeah, and uh, let's see, my favorite gamer right now, I gotta say, my favorite gamer would be anybody who plays the games I play, but the the, the streamer that kind of sticks out for me uh, as a Twitch streamer named Big Cheese in which who I met at TwitchCon last year uh, just out of the blue because um, he plays Tetris. He plays a, um, he, he's really good at Tetris actually. Probably better than I am. Probably probably better than me. And uh, he plays a lot of Call of Duty and uh, I myself play Call of Duty but not, you know, not for like a long time. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, he was very enjoyable to watch, very entertaining. That was actually the the most um, important part of how, how I follow him and watch him. And not only that he's good at games, but he's very talented. So I don't know if I could give him a shout out. Is that okay? Or yeah, is that sure. Possible? Okay. In so fact, if you guys out. know the the streamers' um, names or um, handles, you can shout those out as well mm-hmm. um, for those of yeah, you guys. Just... Yeah. yeah, just a big shout out to Big Cheese. Uh, make sure you catch him at http forward slash slash twitch tv slash Big Cheese. He even has a. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, just go ahead and check him out. And uh, he's very entertaining. And I hope you guys, you know, just hope, hope you guys do find him entertaining. I do. So, like, very unique uh, streamer. And um, yeah. That should be it. Nice. <laughs> All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on to our next panelist question. Uh, from DJB Remix, what is? Uh, do you have a question for our panelists uh, in regards to video games then and now? Uh, so I know we talk a lot about like retro stuff and nostalgic stuff and everything, but as 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 we're all gamers, I also would like to ask like, what's what's a video game that hasn't been made yet, but you would love to play someday, like? Like even if even if the te- maybe the technology isn't there yet, or maybe um, it's just a genre of uh, uh, that that hasn't really been um, put together yet. Uh, you know what I mean? Like a like a like a mashup or something. Like a, like for example, Smash Brothers was a dream game for so many people for so long until finally they they put like Super Smash Brothers together. And then you got to see all these fighting characters fighting in the same game. Um, so, uh, and and while y'all think about that, I, I think I'll go first. And I, I probably have two answers to this. One, I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan. Final Fantasy is like one of my lifelong like video game uh, a series that I'll always be a fan of. Um, and I've played more, probably like... Out of all of them, probably a good like twelve or thirteen of them. But um, uh, I and I'm also a huge Dynasty Warriors fan, which is like a mashup, like a, a 
slasher beat em up type game, arcade beat em up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like that version of Dynasty Warriors was mixed not too long ago with like a Zelda. So they made like Hyrule Warriors. And so, and oh. so, you know, uh, the, the gameplay was like that. And they, they've also done that with other games too. It's called a Musou type game. So I would love to see a Final Fantasy Musou type game. That's like that's my nerd answer. <laughs> and then my other answer really is just in the future. Like I want to I want to be in virtual reality and forget that I'm in virtual reality. You know, I want to put on a headset and I want to be able to smell like the environment. Mm -hmm. You know. Wow. Nice. Uh, I want I want to be able to. Uh, <laughs> I want to be able to. Um, uh, I I don't know feel sensations like if somebody pokes me in the back i'll feel a poke in the back yeah. <laughs> Whoa, yeah. <laughs> augmented reality I'm, right i'm i'm sensing he wants something that's kind of like a, a sword art online oh uh, sure yeah yeah that's mm -hmm. nice. i've only seen one episode of the anime but but yeah i'll take your word for it pack mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very crucial that's a crucial <laughs> anime so oh yeah all right, so uh, Pac-Man, would you like to go next? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't want to take your. Oh no, we're good. Um, so basically, the question is, um, what would be a really good smash uh mashup, right? For uh, from retro. I posted it in the chat too, so if it's kind of paraphrased, but question two, it's like. Okay. Yeah, thank you, you know, Annie, for putting. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I think <laughs> now that I kind of think about it i kind of had to think about this like a little bit but um i'm just trying to go back to like retro gaming like you know all the way you know again we mentioned earlier pong <laughs> i we do know i i do remember when you're playing pong you're just going up and down and stuff yeah. i kind of want to see if if there's gonna be a version of pong where you add depth to it so like instead of just going left and right how about you go up and down oh so you want to see they more 3d that, they have that so no, they have that um, in virtual reality. They have a version where you block, almost like being a goalie, you know, in soccer. Mm -hmm. oh. And then the Nintendo Entertainment mm -hmm. System had the Power Glove version of that piece of crap game. <laughs> piece oh, wow. of crap. <laughs> it was because the Power Glove never worked. Oh, you know what I mean? right, it's right. Oh yeah. Two hundred fifty dollar yeah. piece of crap, basically. It I mean, it, 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 I remember it just looks great at the you know those retro. Looks shows, awesome. So, like, I mean, but. Yeah, it's something you wouldn't want to wear as like a you know something you wear on Halloween, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, like um yeah, I just maybe something a little more of anything retro. I think back in the day, I kind of want to see if what the game would look like if you add depth to it. Like you know, if there's like an up and down to something, and um, yeah, uh, I hmm. even like uh, what do you call that? Uh, I mean, there's this game called Alleyway. It's kind of the same thing as Arkanoid or Arkanoid, where you have this like little spaceship where you just keep hitting the ball and you keep hitting blocks. You know, the ball will hit the blocks and it'll just come back to you and you keep hitting it again and again. Like, I wonder it'll be like, I hope maybe down the line there might be like a game where you add depth to it and then just makes it, it makes it kind of challenging rather than having to go left and right. Then, oh, you gotta have to go down and <laughs> up again. And there's just so many angles you go at. And um, I thought. That would be kind of fun if you know if that kind of game were ever to develop. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Good. Yay. Good one. All right. Okay. Who, who, Pick someone. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'd say uh, Annie. Oh, my God. I don't. Actually, the, the, as I'm sitting here, I had, like, no idea. Like, I don't see right. anything. Your dream game, Annie. Your dream <laughs> game. Okay, well, like, all the games exist uh, uh, like now. a I VR know. game where you eat chips. You know, <laughs> uh, <no>. it probably <laughs> exists already. I'm just joking. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know per se that I have a game that I want to see in the future, but I mean, I'll take a stretch right now. I I would I wouldn't want to see, and I don't know what I want to see in the near future, but I do want to see. I want I do want to hear me. Sorry, my voice as a voice actor in one of them. So I'm hoping for one of those. <laughs> so um, I have always dreamt about being a voice actor in one of the 
games per se, but I'm not as animated as I may have to be like one of those little fudgies was where I'm like the, you know, the stern school teacher or something in a, in a storyline, uh-huh. something, but I would love to see, you know, more, um, I don't know, just opportunity for mainstream, mainstream people like myself to be able to have an opportunity to do, you know, voice acting. So I'd like to see more of that. I know, I know that they have voice actors, you know, that are trained that are, that are, that do this kind of thing. That's their profession. But I'd like to be able to, you know, have an opportunity, any one of us to have an opportunity to do voice acting um, in any of these video games. So that's kind of what I would like to see in the future. <laughs> have you tried to do like, is it a dub? Like, uh, yeah. I mean, I I do that. I've I've done like voice acting for commercials, like voice or okay. like little tiny small ads in the past. Yeah. But I've not done an actual video game. But I imagine now. Remember, you guys, we we had Laura Faye Smith on our podcast not too long ago, and she's mm-hmm. the voice of Genshin. Who is she? Uh, Genshin Impact. She Noel. was. No, I can't remember. Noel. Oh my gosh, some and, uh, Rosalina. Rosalina. Right? There you go, from, Rosalina. Uh, the Super Mario uh, series. Right, and when when we spoke to her, and I asked her about the, her experience, and you know she loves the experience and whatnot, but she did say that a lot of what she does is just a lot of you know reactions like, Ooh, ah, you know, a lot of those, you know. I don't, I'm thinking, hmm. So I want some, something a little bit more intelligent or intelligible, I guess. But um, I don't know. Just I I've not done that per se, but I've done other things, you know, along the of the, the line of voice acting. But um, th- I think that'll be something interesting to to see in the future. I don't know. Just putting it out there, y'all gamers, gaming companies out there. Hello. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. All right. I tag team. Johnny. Um, for me, okay. I just wish they would come out with a triple A title, awesome version of Halloween with Michael Myers. <laughs> you that's and your all word. I want. There you is a really good um, independent game that some programmers made for, uh, called Pig Farmer. Uh, it's just called Halloween or P- Pig Farmer's Halloween. It's done really well, but this is people using their own money, no budget, no actual, you know, company behind them, and they did an incredible job with it. Uh, but yeah, what the heck? Come out with a AAA title, Halloween mo- a game, you know? Oh, that Halloween would be interesting. Game. Yeah, they did. They you did it know? with Friday the Thirteenth. They did a really good job with it. Uh, by the way, I know there was a lawsuit, so they couldn't update the game for a while because trying to get who has the rights—is it the director or is it the producer? It was in uh, it was in um, the courts for a while, so they couldn't update the game for a while, and it kind of hurt the game. But come on. Halloween, Halloween game. <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay, that's 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 what I want to see. That's what I've been waiting to see. Um, Rizaline. Okay. Um, so all the talk about like intellectual property games, like it does, it does make me wish that there could be more mashups of different intellectual property. But I know that that's hard because of, like, copyright and, like, I mean, Disney owns this and Fox owns this or Sony owns. But, like, it would be – and then, okay, because I, I like, like, I like, like, true crime television shows. Mm. So, like, it would be yeah. so cool to, like, have, like, Criminal Minds and, like, Law and Order, like, if I can't have it in a TV show, like, put it into, like, a video game and, like mm-hmm. – but then, just a really good Criminal Minds uh, video game nice. would be dope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like, but is it? Would it be cost effective? Like, because they don't have to bring in the actors to do all the stuff. Like, they just have to animate them and like. So I I like, I would be curious if if it would make sense. In like a in just a dream and imagining standpoint. But what would make it good is if they brought the actors in though. Cause then yeah. they would get mm-hmm. mocap and That's the facial, mm-hmm. you know, like exp- uh, like uh, their act their performances. True. That's what made The Last of Us so good. Is mm-hmm. they got the mocap act. That's true. Yeah. But I mean but other than that, I mean what come, what also came to mind is like in Star Trek when they have like the 
the hollow deck. <laughs> it just it's just like like the ultimate immersive VR without the head, you know, you just if there was a hollow deck, like you just go into a room and then and then all of space and matter can just be anything. But then the whole time you're just in this room. Mm. It's kind of trippy. <laughs> but yeah, that would be cool. But also kind of scary. That would be cool. <laughs> I, on top of that, I just want to say a solid Star Trek game. Ah. Mm-hmm. Well, they have one bridge, bridge crew djb it's called uh, star trek bridge crew for vr but you can play it without vr and you can play co-op with other people one in vr without vr whatever you want it's freaking awesome it is it really okay. is do you not like it that much <clears throat> I, I mean i have some I, videos I, I on streaming it. it it's pretty neat really I'll, maybe you and I should have to get some time playing it, Johnny. But 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 I, but I will say though that I know that that's just a kind of a limited scope, in my opinion. Like a Star Trek game needs to be as big as like Mass Effect, like that kind of scale yeah. of a game. Like this is more like, um, well, I put it to you this way: your first mission, and it's all random, so you could have a real easy mission or a real hard mission. You can choose if you want it randomized or, you know, sequential. But your first mission is the Kobayashi Maru, just to put it in, in perspective. Uh-huh. Yeah. I said it would be a one heck of a game, especially when you are uh, when you have Criminal Minds, like you said, and then you add the Mass Effect um, uh, mechanism yeah. into the game where, like, any any decision has a consequence, and there's going to be a oh, whole like mess of them, too, and you add on uh, actual actors, you put them on, I mean, they're the price would be steep, but then that would be one heck of a game, actually. Oh yeah, that yeah. would be one heck of a game. Yeah, I mean, the thing too is like everything, everything is also like a mobile game now. Like you could just mm. they just kind of do these not great quality for the phone kind of kind of things. Mm. <laughs> or what also comes to mind is like. I just think of like uh, at the casinos, like they have the slot machines. Oh yeah! And then like it's like, oh, that one's a Barbie mm-hmm. one, and that one's like a, <laughs> a Wonder Woman. Yeah, Candy Crush. That's, that's oh, I was about to say Candy Crush. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the slot machine, <laughs> Candy Crush. Like, they are one thing for the undies. I want to see that uh, for one PC. Thing that I just the one thing I just wanted to add is um like VR games. For me personally, like I have a VR right behind me here. It's the Rift S, the Oculus Rift. I think it's the best of all the ones I've ever tried and owned. Um, wow. It's just right, you know what I mean? Performance wise, <laughs> visual. But I get exhausted. Like I cannot play it more than an hour. Mm-hmm. Uh, but one thing I will say is it's getting more and more to the point where um, developers, there's this one game called Boneworks. And the mm-hmm. game is, it's not a port, it's not Call of Duty put into VR. It's a ground up from the very beginning a VR game. The whole experience is for VR. And it's amazing. Wow. Um, my middle kid, he played it. He played it for maybe four days straight and beat it. That's how addicting and just so it makes you think it's 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 a VR game, not a conversion. It's an actual VR game from the ground up. It's amazing. You should if you ever get a VR by that game, Boneworks it's called. I've been meaning it's on my list. I've been meaning to play it. I've been hearing a lot of good stuff about that one. Oh yeah. So, um, I think we did everybody answer everyone. that question? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Good job. Good job. Um, good job. Uh, next panelist question is gonna come from Crazy Pac Man. All right. Okay. So, I don't know we're all gamers, right? So, uh, we all have to start somewhere. So, um, in terms of how we are now as gamers, so. What is your story? What is the game that influenced you into gaming? Okay, so I'll be the first to answer that. Um, there's kind of a little process into that. So, um, again, I started off playing, you know, retro games. You know, you know, just the Mario 2D platformers or whatnot. You know, everything 2D. Then you go on. It turns into a little bit of 3D. Um, I had to go. Well, we start. We started from there. We go into the 3D where we play. You know, the Mario 64s, and um, yeah, that's just casual gaming for me. But what really influenced me into gaming after that point was Halo, because um, Halo was my first shooter game that I've ever played, 
Um, and that influenced, influenced me into playing Call of Duty. And I played a lot more Call of Duty, all those Call of Duty uh, series, uh, every, you know, the Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, <laughs> uh, that whole thing. Um, whole series. Went from there, then Destiny, and then Destiny 2. And here we are right now. It would be Overwatch, now Overwatch 2. So um what got me into gaming is uh halo because it was the first fps game i have ever played and from then on i started uh branching out to different fps games and anything shooter type like and um yeah and it's got me well that's just where i am today when it's in terms of playing games like uh, i've played overwatch 2 for a while which i've kind of been taking a break a little bit i admit i, I used to play a lot of overwatch he's but, a rager uh, uh you know <laughs> low-key but you know i the thing is like i i i would rage a little bit only because i want to do really good at it and um it's just that i feel like you know people have been playing overwatch now even the new one i mean i think a lot of people have caught on since a lot of people can play it it's free to play you know there's just a lot more like better people out there um I just thought, you know, I just trying to find myself, you know, and let me see if I could find myself, my inner peace before I start playing it again. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, as terms of being an influence into gaming, yeah, Halo was the very first game. That was the, the game that influenced me to playing, um, to become a gamer. Yeah, you know, I've, I've, I was bad at first. You know, my brother helped me along the way because he was, he's, he was actually better than me at Halo and he taught me all the, the, t the, the tricks and strats and everything and um and i just took that and then went off with it and kind of branched out with different uh, fps games and here we are so nice mm -hmm. uh let's see uh dj what do you think yeah okay uh so really quick again fact man just so i know the like what's my what's What's the experience that got me into got me into being a gamer? Is that what you said? No, what is the game that influenced you oh. into gaming? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sitting here and I'm just thinking like, okay, I know I talked about it, but but my answer will just will just have to be Chrono Trigger. Like, it always comes back to Chrono Trigger for me because, mm. and I, I've I've told the story about how, you know. Uh, Chrono Trigger was a game that I, I, I went to uh, that I wanted to play again um, uh, at a really difficult point in my life. I've told, I've told the story about how, like, it, uh, it, it's just, it, it, like, the soundtrack and everything is so good, in my opinion. Um, Chrono Trigger was a game that like showed me that video games can have depth to them it can have a long story it can be more than just something that you can brag about your highest score to your friends with it's something that you can like really relate to and mm -hmm. uh and and feel like it enriches your life but on top of that it's like whenever i think about the game chrono trigger i think about that well, that tiny period in my life, and I was in fifth grade. <laughs> I was, uh, I was in a, I, 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 like, I enjoyed like going to school because I had friends uh, that that were I was cool with. There was no, there was no beef, no drama when I was fifth grade. Mariah dropped a fire album uh -huh. that summer. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's you know, you heard "Always Be My Baby" everywhere that, that summer, you know. So, Chrono Trigger is just a really nice memory. You know, the ladies was digging DJ B in fifth grade, you know. So, I mean, you know, like uh, anyway. <laughs> hey, anyway, you guys got swag. Um, what, you, what, uh, what can you say? Um, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding here. But, but really, anyway, it's just Chrono Trigger was a game that really made me feel like um, uh, that there is a genre that will that that really like like there's some people that for them gaming is shooters. For some people, gaming is uh, um, fighting games or uh, like uh, score chasing games, and that's totally cool. But for me, like. That's what I realized. Like gaming, I'm an RPG player. Like that—that's my genre, and so that's what got me into it. 
Mm. Nice. Yeah. Okay, who are you going to tag team? Oh, I have to. <coughs> I'm going to pick you. Okay. Um, <laughs> I had many answers that went through my head. Um, <laughs> I will say, I will say, I got, I chose to get a Switch because I was at a friend's party and they were playing Mario Kart on the on the switch like on the tiny little screen like they had it on the table mm-hmm. and they were, and then I tried it and I was like you know what I'm pretty I'm not bad at this so I'm gonna get <laughs> 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 I, I like demo I like demoed by playing Mario Kart on someone's switch and I was like I'll just get one for myself yeah. um, <laughs> and uh, since then I mean I play I mean on the switch I like to play like uh, Mario Kart and like Animal Crossing I played a lot of that I have not touch animal crossing in a long time <laughs> my islanders probably miss me um <laughs> but i i mean i i what also comes to mind is like maybe it was before you even started streaming but like we oh. i would just we would hang out here and like i just play games on your playstation 4 and um again it was like uh the Beyond Two Souls, or like all the, the it was like the Walking Dead, yeah, the Telltale, the Telltale those Telltale okay. games. Um, it, it was fun to just sit down and like choose pew my pew. own adventure. <laughs> no, no pew pews, but <laughs> just choose maybe some slight pew pews. But um, and and like again, like I'm not. It it got me familiar with holding the controller and like the first. This is the triangle, and this is the. This is the square, and then I had to like switch my brain because it's not the same on the on the switch. And, um, yes. Just, just, just oh. using, just using DJB's PlayStation, and like even the sounds of the menu screen is like oddly, slightly annoying, but like mostly comforting, just, <laughs> just because it's it's familiar. And yes. uh, you were de- you were deprived of gaming. I was, so I just like you were one I've been, <laughs> I guess I mean. So I have a weird habit of just kind of like really like binging and like I was playing Lost Ark for like a minute. Oh like yeah, yeah. Really just a minute. Um, I guess it's yeah. It is just what comes to mind is just like using the console, definitely like the PlayStation and mm-hmm. the Switch. I think what what really that tells me is that you have yet to find your game. That yeah. Makes you a game. True. Sure. I think that's what it is. Wow. That's like, true. If, wow. If you I feel like this is a breakthrough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The intervention. Intervention. G A. Gamers Anonymous. Uh, gamers right. Anonymous. Gamers yeah. Anonymous. Uh, we we can help way. you. We can help you. <laughs> but, I mean, that's, that's that's me. Like yeah. we we all have different experiences with gaming, and we all in our own way have come to like respect it and appreciate it and i've been trying to get resilient game to to acquiesce and play a final fantasy game oh she, Ooh, she, yeah she hasn't you know yet, right maybe someday yeah right. there's been a couple of canceling in there <laughs> it's like anger this management my, but in my, reverse this is my intervention. <laughs> okay. uh who didn't answer the question yet uh, johnny? johnny and myself oh annie okay annie yeah Ooh, okay, so my, I, I did mine in three like stages. So as you guys know, as a kid, I was all hanging out with my brother. I had FOMO, and I still have FOMO. Y'all know me. I have FOMO. So I did uh, Asteroids and Centipedes, going to the arcade with my brother, right? Um, and then when my kids, um, when I had my kids, and then we got them game consoles and whatnot, you know, then at the time it was all Mario, everything Super Mario, right? But they were also into um, rock band and um, Guitar Hero. So I had to get involved. I couldn't do the Guitar Hero because, it, you know, I couldn't get my hands. The, 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 my dexterity was just awful. I couldn't get my hands to, to go right, and I was frustrated. But I did do the rock band with them. At first, they were like, Mom, you want to sing with us? You want to be our singer? And I'm like, are you sure? So when I did become their singer, they are like, can you not sing anymore? <laughs> like, oh man. <laughs> but it's only because they're like, you know, you're like overpowering the music. And I'm like, I'm sorry. So, uh, so that was then, right? So again, that's my second stage. Then my third stage of my life, uh, happened. I'm, I haven't been a gamer more than three years, three years at best. 
So um, I have to say a lot of it was between me, myself and Johnny. When I first met Johnny, we, we met on Twi Twitch Sinks, as you know. And um, and then I, I just kind of asked him, like, what game can we play together? Like, I want to start playing games because, you know, you go on Twitch and there's it's 100 percent all games pretty much. Right. Or 99 percent all games. And it's one percent of everything else. Um, or I don't know. The percentage is way off. But That's I wanted to. Yeah, and I wanted to, like, play a game, you know, like, I want to go on Twitch and I want to, like, stream a game. So he and I started playing World War Z, and I had a horrible PC at the time. I had a RTX, or no, GTX 970 GPU. It was horrible. And the, th the fact that I even was able to move and, you know, maneuver was beyond me, I, you know, with, with such a laggy GPU. And I remember our, one of our friends, Dre, Dracy, who's on our, one of our mods, kept telling me, Annie, use your crosshairs. And I'm like, what's a crosshair? <laughs> I didn't <laughs> know. I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, use your crosshair, point, aim. I'm like, what's that? Honestly, I kid you not. I'm going, wait, because he, he he said that I was just shooting into oblivion, and I was, which is probably true. Uh -huh. And um, <laughs> so I, you know, from then I just said, okay, I can't come on these streams or can't play these games looking like an idiot. So I wanted to hone in a little bit more on my you know my skills so world war z johnny and i will still play it now that you know the grab might have a better computer a better com uh, graphics card and i can you know actually maneuver on my pc but um it just wasn't my game it wasn't something that i wanted to wake up to you know and go oh you know after i do all my chores or after i do all my errands i want to come home and play world war z it wasn't that it was that wasn't it so what was it and how i discovered it was totally by accident, I just remember when Valorant did come out, when it did, um, it was so brand new that only a few people could have the key, right? The stream key, basically, um, or stream code, rather. So I think, I, I and I asked him today, uh, Larzy, do you remember giving me the code for Valorant? He goes, I think, maybe. So, And I had it, mm -hmm. honestly, for a whole freaking year before I even opened the game. And then it wasn't until like maybe what uh, a little over a year, no, a year and a half ago. How long? How old is Valorant? Like a little over two years, right? So two and a half years now. Two and a half years. Okay, so literally about a year and a half ago, I said, okay, you know, another girl and I, she and I, just said we need to have a game that we can play like all the time. W what could we try? We tried Fortnite at the time when it was building, right? And I hated building, so I'm like, no, this is not the game for me. I don't know if this this isn't it. This isn't the, this isn't the, this isn't the, this isn't the attraction I wanted. I I don't feel you know like I need to play this game until we opened up Valorant, and then it became like, oh, 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 <laughs> and Voodoo, who's in this stream, and Hi Bye, who's the other mod, did a history. They said they they went back to my history in Valorant and they said at the time that I was playing and maining Sage and and Jet of all of all characters of all agents. I'm like, I was. And they said, yes, you didn't even play um, Viper until you unlocked her. And when I unlocked her, all hell broke loose because that was it. That was I was forever Viper. And that is my game. And I know I've only been doing. Then I let you try. <laughs> yeah, see, I said, then I let you. He, he let me try Viper because Viper was his main and I stole Viper from him. I literally <laughs> stole Viper from him. And I I remember, you know, when I once I became, you know, familiar with Viper, that was it. That's all she wrote. I, that's all I wanted to play. So I've only been a gamer at best, maybe two and a half years. Uh, um. So, or yeah, no, maybe a year and a half. I don't know, two years ish. And so that is the game that has influenced me to, to want to play games all the time. So now I'm trying, I'm trying to be a little bit more versatile. And so I said, okay, let me, let me get a switch. Let me, let me see what the hype is. Again, here's my fourth stage of FOMO. Um, so I got a switch and I'm trying to play games on the switch and these guys hate me because I'm terrible on Overcooked <laughs> 2, you know, over, <laughs> oh God. I, overcooked yeah. <laughs> I burn everything, <laughs> but it's freaking <laughs> hilarious. I pee my pants because it's so funny. So that it, so my game that got me started was World War Z. 
but you know we still play it occasionally but it's not the game that's not my go-to game so obviously my one influencer game that has stuck with me and will continue to stick with me is Valorant and that's the game that I play so <laughs> we don't hate you we have a blast <laughs> it makes me laugh so hard I I I uh if you want to hear some high-pitched laughing come watch me play Overcooked too <laughs> uh Johnny you're next <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> uh, I don't know how to answer this, to be honest. <laughs> I wouldn't say I, there was any particular game that made me into a gamer. I would say it is just the competitive nature of my family, whether it be my sister or my dad. It's kind of like we grew up with the in television, and we didn't even have other consoles till later. And a lot of those games are very competitive, whether it be <laughs> racing games, sports games. Sports games, I think, is some of the most competitive games there is because you don't know. There's no level. You don't know whether you're going to have a good game, a bad game, what the outcome is going to be. So <laughs> I wouldn't, I couldn't really pin a particular game that made me a gamer. I think it's just the competitive nature within my family. Yeah, you are against very each fair. other. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like. That's the game <laughs> that really made me a gamer, really enjoy it, enjoy the victory, even, you know, accept the defeat, you know, that's yeah. <laughs> all a part of it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was a short and sweet answer. I was expecting you to mm. elaborate like this long winded novel, but all good. All good. Well, <laughs> I can't pin it on one game. Yeah. I mean. You know? Well, that's the mark of a true gamer, right? Because you don't, you can't yeah. pin it down to one. Yeah. Short and awesome. sweet, just Short like how sweet. I like my coffee. Uh, <clears throat> what? Short and sweet. Okay. I'll Short drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> hydrate, <you> hydrate. <laughs> All right. Did everyone answer that question then, right? Yeah. That was it? Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a little break for a second. We are going to do our fun facts section. Okay. So this is all pertaining to video games then and now. I'll start with the first one. Uh, fun fact. Fun fact one. The Game Boy was the first game console in space. Wow. That's right. The Game Boy. The Nintendo Game Boy. In 1993, mm -hmm. the Game Boy's Tetris was the first ever game played in space and the game boy the first console played in space it came aboard the soya tm-17 rocket meeting the mir space station russian cosmonaut sobrov a alad sanstri was the first to play it mm. Mm. interesting cool okay i'm gonna put well, like the game boy could just like it, it could handle the air pressure or whatever oh you know what? i'll add yeah. on to that i'll actually add on to that um i went to i think years ago i went to the nintendo store in new york city and they displayed the game boy that was that that was in a uh it was actually it was going through a iraqi missile assault what? so yeah the game boy was in that building and then there were a bunch of missiles being dropped and it hit that building, and ever since that Game Boy was still able to work, it, like <laughs> the outside, the outside of the Game Boy is just like messed up, but it's still playable. Wow. It's giving Nokia, yeah. Nokia phone. Nintendo '90s mm -hmm. Nintendo consoles were solid, man. Like they were solid. It's it's, it's a meme that an N64 you could like toss that off a bridge or something <laughs> like that. You'd still plug it in and be able to play it. Like it's, it's a meme, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness that's wow. cool mm -hmm. i believe it i second that <laughs> <laughs> all right okay so um fun fact number two the game pac-man the most popular game of the 80s i would oh. say pac-man could have been named puck man oh oh due oh. to the character we have some graphics due to i'm the game so characters sorry. Wait. resemblance to a hockey puck wait a minute now its developers initially planned to name the game puck man however they later changed it to pac-man 
because of the concern that vandals may deface the name. <laughs> Get it? Oh, puck? Wow. Wood rhymes with puck? Uh, okay. Get okay. it? Okay. <laughs> Luck. Okay, oh, luck no, man. Luck <laughs> man. No. Now all I can say is my name could have been Crazy Puck Man. No, so my that goodness. Been, that would have been a very, very um, crazy <laughs> situation. A, if that was universe, the case. but that's what it is. Just, just <laughs> don't a, add a Philippine <laughs> accent, please. And... There's, yeah, a, there's a very no. that's called that. Hey, bro, hey, hey, bro oh, I beat the score. Ah. Oh. Fuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's up? <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, Johnny, oh, I just posted the uh, a, a photo of the Game Boy one that you just talked about. Can you talk about oh, okay. that? Yeah. So, ch- talk. Yeah. There it there's, is. There's the Game photo. Game Boy in space. The Game Boy it's in space. It's just, like, space. straight up in space. Like, they're just. I'll do sound raw. effects, guys. Just raw space. Is this real? Is this. Is that the actual? Is that an actual screenshot? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Wouldn't that be <laughs> nice? cool? That, 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 looks, that, from that the... looks poetic, actually, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. that looks pretty awesome, actually, right? Yeah. Uh, if I was gonna just... do a video game book, that would be the the, the cover art. You know? I mean, yeah. I'm they, with. They sent an astronaut <laughs> that did it for the grams. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I I uh, I'm with Riz on that. Uh, did it withstand like all the pressure and and the atmosphere? I mean, I'm, I know that they're in, you know, a, a pressurized, well, oxygenated chamber. But I'm just curious, you know, something of that nature. Does does it it, it because it didn't it wasn't you know NASA approved, you know, device so so to speak. Did it? I wondered if it really did. Or not NASA, but you know, engineered space engineered to prove. But yeah. I wonder if it did withstand that pressure. I'm assuming it did. I want right? to know where it is now. Yeah, where that's a that good one. Boy? Right? That's gotta it's be still worth in a space. Lot of money. They left Forget it. the moon rocks. I want <laughs> it's the floating. Game Boy. It's a meteor. <laughs> I went to space. Right? <laughs> It'd probably survive it too. <laughs> they forgot it. <laughs> it's out there with the with the N64. <laughs> it's probably so in Mars weird. somewhere. It's probably in Mars somewhere. He Still left working. it. He yeah. left it on the moon or somewhere, you know. All right, and here's here's a here's a graphic of the Puck Man. <laughs> yes, don't Puck Man. Puck Man. Mm. Wait, and so... I, I I could totally see how easy it would be to vandalize. So that. easy, just yeah. one one, so one copy, one second. So yeah. easy. Yeah. <laughs> That's freaking okay. hilarious. But it makes sense because when his mouth is closed, he looks like a hockey puck, right? Mm. Yeah. So I see where they were going Does on the Tyson design. Does have a nose like that? Or is it? No. I think it was just added. You know, <laughs> it's so in exaggerated. That terrible cartoon they had in the, in the 90s. So yeah, he did. Remember that terrible cartoon? But I think um, the one, uh, I think they did have the nose still for, I think it's just really a really small nose. It's just never that huge of a nose, but. I think they added it to the Pac Man now. That's a real question. Hey, it's just, it's Pinocchio, you liar. Just kidding. <laughs> hey, Buckman is lying. <laughs> yeah. Lie. <laughs> okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, third fun fact. And I think we kind of, um, we kind of talked about this uh, before in the past. Studies have shown that Tetris can curb sex. Drug and food cravings. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's because the physical and visual representation of fixing things to <laughs> to fit just right gives us the illusion <laughs> of having our shit together. <laughs> that. Or maybe it's Lots something else. Nevertheless, <laughs> it's proven that Tetris helps lessen impulsive behavior, carnal desires, no more. Carnal design. Okay, so I play a lot of Tetris, right? <laughs> so I'll believe that it does kind Let of curve the food cravings. <laughs> like, oh but I gotta say though, <laughs> Let me I do. Explain. It's <laughs> confession <laughs> time. I'm like, okay, like, yeah. Well, well, so I happen to bring, okay, Loki, I bring my Switch to work. I play it during break. <laughs> okay. okay. To me, I think it's just more of. I think it to me it's more of, it's more of like I think it, it's it relieves stress. That's all it does. Okay. Like it just kind of. If you, you know, say just, so. Yeah, it it. 
It's just the fact that you're you're <laughs> beyond the the whole the chaos in the game. It actually does have a little satisfaction of like you know going through you know getting all these lines together and everything like that and just like really dominating in it. So like it's just um, to me, I think personally, it's just uh, it's just <clears throat> it lessens the stress, you know, and uh, it. It to me it does help a little more with my work with what I do because you know I'm I'm more of a fact uh, I'm a, a warehouse worker and you know just building you know boxes on top of boxes on top of boxes it actually does help out a little bit so <laughs> you put your touch of skills to that right <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly mm-hmm. building so boxes. it does help a bit yeah, yeah. nice I hope you guys are enjoying these fun facts I posted them there in the um, uh, Twitch chat uh, for your visual p- um, reading pleasure, rather. All right, and I think I have the last. Last year, she said. Shush. <laughs> 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 I have the last fun fact, which is I don't have a graphic for this, um, but <clears throat> speaking of Tetris, did you know that there are over seventy unique platforms or versions of Tetris as of twenty twenty three? Seventy. And I can attest to that because the other night, remember when, when we were this, I think it was just this week or last week, we were trying to play some retro games, um, Pac-Man. Uh, we were uh, on the, n- not the Game Boy, but the Nintendo, the NES, I think we were. And I was trying to look for the original Tetris, the one that, you know, I played as a kid. And you go, yeah, you should be able just to type in Tetris. OMG. I typed in Tetris and I was for days scrolling down going, oh my gosh really seriously and i didn't count 70 but i did quite you know mm-hmm. count quite a few so i believe it and there 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 are many versions of tetris mm-hmm. but my version of tetris was the, one, the original when it came out and i remember mm-hmm. my brother and i would like wake up in the morning and go oh my god i had a dream about tetris oh my god me too like i would mm-hmm. in my dream visualize these those little what are they called? Blocks coming down and we're turning them in our sleep, you know. Yeah. T- turning them in our sleep. Turn left, right. No. You know, and then just trying to, you know, clear lines. So, yeah, I believe that there are 70, at least 70. Right. Um, I could totally attest to that because um, out of the 70, I probably have like maybe 12 or 15 of them. So <laughs> spanning do. across from, you know, NES Those are to the Xbox over. to yeah. the PS4. <laughs> <laughs> to, the, to the switch yeah i gotta attest to that i probably have like 15 out of the seven OMG. there's there's a lot of different versions right oh yeah believe it or not guys um uh for you video game collectors you probably already know this for the sega genesis console or the sega mega drive depending on us or not uh for the sega genesis the most expensive cartridge is tetris on the sega genesis wow. it's worth a minimum really? sixteen thousand dollars for the cartridge up to thirty thousand dollars. It's one of the most rare and wow. sought after gaming collector cartridges for sixteen bit. Wow, um, that's amazing. See? And the game I sucks. And the game sucks too, but it's it's so <laughs> rare, you know, it's 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 a huge deal on the market for collectors. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. a movie about Tetris actually that's coming right, out yeah, too. I was thinking about that. There's a live action Tetris movie coming out. What? I saw, I, yeah, I, I, I saw the night. There was one about the Air Jordan. They made a movie about Air Jordan. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw that. Oh and yeah, yeah. Then I saw the Tetris one. I'm just like, oh my god, they're running out of ideas. <laughs> not, not that I don't, not that I don't want to watch it or anything, but this... can't they create something new? Why are they How talking about you... stuff that really it's, happened? It's a true story though. About you know what? It... Yeah, yeah. Um... The most entertaining movie I would like to see them uh, do for a video game, Frogger. Really? <laughs> they should do a Frogger movie. Should they do a horror game? <laughs> like that would be interesting to me. Like I, I, I would imagine oh, that. Okay, it, road, right? uh, yeah, what's okay. it? Illum- Illumity? Like whoever the the production who did the uh, Mario Brothers movie? I would oh, imagine them doing I a Frogger, Frogger movie. It's a Sega game, isn't it? Sega made Frogger. Frogger. Pretty I sure. thought it was an Atari game at first, or a Sega um, Master System. I don't know, but I like, think Frogger's. It was originally developed by Sega. Mm-hmm. I would, would like to wrong. see that one. Like, I would be really interested uh, interested in too. Who would voice Frogger? <laughs> <laughs> if that's the case. That would be and interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be Chris Pratt. Oh no, it's yeah. not. It's oh, Konami. It has to be Chris Pratt. Oh, Konami made Frogger. Never mind. It had nothing oh, to do Konami. with Sega. Yeah. 
High Before Bison. Contra, there was Frogger. Contra would be a good movie, actually. Oh, hell yeah. Contra oh. would be a good movie. Contra, Contra the Contra? movie. How long? Mm-hmm. Contra and before the movie. before the game starts, it's like up, down, left, right, A, B, yeah. start, <laughs> left, one, you know. So yeah, 30 lives in the beginning. It does the little code. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that would be a great movie. All right, so this concludes our fun facts for this episode. Okay. Yay. Thanks, Hope everybody enjoyed who it. contributed. Yay. We'll have many okay. more fun facts <clears throat> in our... Okay, so Future. I think we're, we're just going to do what, one question per panelist, right, for this? Because I think we, we might have more than one, but we'll just stick to one. Is that cool with everyone? Sure. Oh. Wait, you didn't ask right. your question yeah. yet. I'm next, actually. So oh, okay. <laughs> this next one <laughs> is my question. Uh... It's a weird question, but it's relevant to video games then and now, and I'd like to get everyone's opinion on it. Mm-hmm. So back in the early 1990s, games like Doom and Splatterhouse hit the market, and parents began complaining that video games are having a negative effect on the young kids. Hence, the ESRB, the Entertainment Software Rating Board, video game rating board service was born and it required a label on video games to measure how violent and destructive the game is based on their rating system. Do you think that video games then and now have any influence on violent and destructive behavior on our kids? So as most of you know, if you buy a video game, like let's say you buy a cartridge, there's going to be a little rating on there called ESRB, Mm -hmm. you know, um, I remember when that when that happened, it was really Doom was what spiked it all. Doom wasn't really on any consoles, but it was on the PC, and people were just having a field day. Like, look at all the violence, you know what I mean? Um, what is, I'd like to get your, your guys' opinion. And same thing with chat. Do you think video games have an effect on the behavior of violent and destructive behavior on kids? And does the yes. ESRB even it's work? I mean, hmm. we'll start with Annie. That's a loaded question, y'all. Annie, um, okay. Oh, so. Okay. You have kids. I so do like... have kids. I I can say this. Oh, sorry. Let me just post that there for everybody. Is that the number four? Okay. So um, I do have kids, and and I can honestly say um, that it does have some effect on 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 kids. Um, I don't really know how early we or how young the kids were when we introduced gaming to them. It was you know enough early enough where they were able to understand and that was kind of key because we had to un- we had to kind of teach them you know wrong from right of course um real versus f- fantasy um so i think it i'm not gonna and i'm not bashing please don't take this as bashing you know any parents out there i'm not parent bashing but i think it's just you know you you the parent have to be restrictive on what you um introduce to your children video games especially um or you know in this case video games and other things but um you know restrict them restrict time perhaps restrict um even with whom they play with sometimes you know if they're you know single player games where you can play you can isolate them at home kind of thing maybe maybe that'd be better versus if they were to have access to online gaming or or shareable type of games um, per se. Um, I think they, they can discover that later when they get more social, when their their social skills are a, a, a bit more fine tuned, I guess. Um, because with when they're kids and they're learning still even just how to be social in a in a school setting versus in a game setting, that's two different kinds of um, you know environments. I think you just have to be really mm, you really have to be aware of of, of the kinds of games that they're playing. So having the ESRB uh, ratings, um, I think, are very, very helpful because you have it in movies. Why not have it in games? I think it's fair that you have it in games. So I think um, having that is is uh, key to the types of games that you introduce your kids to. And then, um, you know, be, just have um, discernment and some discretion as to uh, the age at which you introduce them. So um, to each his own, I want to say, but also have some you know wherewithal with what you are um, introducing them to so that's my story and i'm sticking to it (laughs) yeah i mean 
Who who comes to mind to you is well, um, I know like for you know DJ and I like our parents did not grow up with video games. Like they did not. They were much older when they started using computers and like technology and like consuming media. Um, so what we always talk about is like when we have kids, like we we would we're a little more aware of what's out there and um and the and i hope that like because we know technology that it's easier to it to introduce it to to kids and Mm -hmm. like and be able to like monitor it a lot better um but i also i mean i think like Tech, I mean, not just video games, but like technology itself, like there are a lot of setbacks, but there's also a lot of benefits. Like we, uh, we talk about VR a lot and um, it's, I think it's cool, like how much it opens up accessibility that you can be sitting in your own chair with some headset, but then you can go to Disneyland or you can go to some place and learn something. Like it's a, it's a tool that can be used to like benefit people and to like uh provide education and like um give give people who otherwise wouldn't be able to have that kind of access or experience to do those things um right so and then and then yeah like the again like the pandemic was like that's a time where a lot of people got into gaming and connected with each other that's why that's how we all (laughs) ended up here doing um, (laughs) a podcast and talking about these kinds of things but it's it's a it's a good way to connect people um and yeah I mean maybe maybe some of that bad rap has kind of kind of changed over time I don't know I would hope so very nice okay what about you guys uh Johnny um okay my opinion is bad kids bad kid okay game's not gonna make it (laughs) bad okay i I remember when i was about 12 or maybe 11 years old my grandma wanted us to go to catechism (laughs) yeah you know so i don't want to get all religious and all that but i went to catechism and me and my sister both went to catechism we couldn't be together because she's older than me so she was in a different group and i was in this other group and man some of the most worst kids on the face of the earth i mean they needed they needed god's help okay (laughs) just (laughs) we're in catechism almost like the parents just threw them there like you deal with them that's a bad kid a bad kid uh video games is just um i i agree with uh like what largely said i don't think video games they they really influence per, per se. I think parents need to be proactive about what their kids are playing. You should be that way. If you're a parent, you should be doing that anyways. You should be well aware about what they're what they're doing. But I don't think a game, a video game, whether it be console, PC, whatever, I don't think the game itself um, makes a non-violent kid destructive and violent out of the blue. You are what you are. These kids that are destructive and violent, they're already that way, period, you know? So I understand why, you know, I agree partially with what Eddie had to say. If you have it for movies, um, whether it's going to be R rating, PG, you know, it's okay. I, I agree with that aspect of having a rating on the game, but I don't think games alone basically influence violent or destructive behavior in kids the kid is either already violent and destructive or not you know that's my opinion mm. i'm okay. sticking with that <laughs> good, good, well, good. let's see i mean I, th- I think i'm just gonna keep it you know a little short and sweet here like i mean i'll, I'll second you know everybody because um i don't think games do influence uh you know destructive behavior but i mean the i don't think it games do influence that but i think there's gonna be of course there's how there has to be outside influences so like definitely you know the parents that have to make sure that they you know they don't uh it's 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 the responsibility that their kids don't get into that kind of um, influence in the first place so i mean games are games you know and um 
it shouldn't be a reason for you know anybody you know, anyone's um you know um decision in life or anything like that like oh like you know it, it shouldn't be anything destructive but i mean at the same time um maybe when it comes to playing games you know addictively maybe that might be uh, that might be a um that, that definitely is more of an issue than you know than someone rather a kid or a dog you know have that impulse like oh man i gotta like you know start smashing and you know murdering people or anything like that but like you know it's just um but when it comes to like you know kids with uh, in games and doing stuff like that i mean it's it, it should be like the parents like that should be watching out for that but uh you know yeah, it's, 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 there has to be at least like some outside, you know, influences. If yeah. if they ever are like that, then you know, I don't think games are going to be like any influence for that. I mean, that would, that'd be kind of an alibi. But I, I mean, what also does come to mind is like the toxicity in games, though. That's what I was gonna say. Okay, <laughs> I, I was gonna say this. Yeah. Uh, sorry, were you were you done, Pac-Man? Coming no. from a Overwatch player. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah exactly. that's, see, that's why I took a break. <laughs> see? So, I, 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 not yeah, that bad. It's just, yeah. I, I would <laughs> say, like, rather than what, like, is in the video games, I would be more, if I were a parent, I would be more concerned about the people that they would come across when playing these games. Like, that's what my concern would be more of. You know, I like I would rather my I, I would way rather have my kid like pick up hookers in, in their car in GTA Five. <laughs> <laughs> rather the way than, this sentence just came out. Rather than rather than <laughs> chat with pro- potential pedos. Yeah. On on, uh, on uh, uh, Maple Story or whatever I don't know, but <laughs> yeah. So. I... I'd rather be on Oregon Trail fight uh, fight of malaria. I mean, I'd rather do that. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> I mean, yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so yes, I, I do think that there is to, something to be said about like um, people, young people being desensitized a bit um, to violence because of like the constant exposure. Um, I think that there. I know that there has been some studies that were done where where uh, um, they 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 found that individuals who played violent video games like shooters uh, they they uh, they measured their like facial responses hmm. and uh, scientifically determined at least through this one study that people tend people had less empathetic uh, uh, facial expressions because uh, because they played more violent video games, and I and I feel like that that makes a lot of sense because you play these games and you might say something to somebody uh, in this game that you would never say to somebody like oh. just casually, just normally, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But so I guess in in some ways I feel like maybe there is something to be said about violence and um and and constant uh mm. uh oh, just i don't know um just just any anything that looks and that can be like can trigger bad behavior um however we have a rating system now like the SRB which i i agree with Johnny like i, I think it's it's been more helpful than hurtful mm-hmm. um so uh so does that, yeah. You just gotta, you just gotta know what you're consuming. That's all. And I think we also <laughs> should also make a point that, like, we should um, be more uh, as like gamer culture should <clears throat> move towards like holding some of these uh, developers to to uh, to okay. better standards, mm-hmm. not just making like mindless destruction games and like games that also like may have like games like The Last of Us, which talk about like it has a lot of violence in it but it also talks about like the the uh the significance of life and like and and that you know violence is not like just senseless it actually has 
repercussions. So. Right. I want to. I'm sorry. I just have to say this real fast. I'm okay. sorry. What DJ, what DJ just said right now made me think of a joke my friend told me. Like, um, I guess my one of my friends he used to shoplift back in the '90s, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and he would shoplift music, right? And then he gets home to play the 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 tape or the CD, right? And it's the clean version, you know. <laughs> 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 he shoplifted nice. the wrong version, oh, right? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, like, anyway, I'm sorry. I want to add to what DJ was saying and to what everybody was saying, too, because, um, you know, the 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 fact that they we have our avatars, we have our, our quote-unquote profiles, our gamer names gives us gives kids, not just kids, even us, um, adults, anybody, anonymity basically so where you would not act one way in a you know say a public setting or a more you know uh, let's go with that public setting you have now you, you you're kind of living that fantasy in life right where you can act a certain way and you know um, pop off at the mouth anytime you want to or be the way that you are toxic uh, we we do that around a lot um, because you have that anonymity so I think that having that too um, because you, you don't have your your identity quote unquote um, blasted out there you don't, they, they can't put you know the name with the face the face with the name or they can't figure out who's who or what not yeah it's it, they have that anonymity they have the ability to be able to to act a certain way so I'm not saying that's good or bad I'm just saying I mean I'm making a point that you know that because of that you know you we've all seen that movie what player uh, ready 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 player one. ready player yeah. is that what it is uh -huh. ready player one I what mean right when you yeah. see the movie when you learn about these people's names and then you see their fate the fate even though they were it was an animated movie it was like oh that's who you are right and mm. then they find out that they're actually better than say their character i'm just making a point so uh i just wanted to throw it out there i i had a point honestly <laughs> but the more we kept talking i'm like i'm gonna lose my point so yeah there it went anyways but to be honest annie they could crack down on it they could um, pretty easily in the gaming community if they wanted to all they have to do and i think one or two games had done this before if they catch you cheating let's say right or or, or you know uh, using a illegal copy of the game they ban your gpu um um from their servers oh interesting mm, okay so let's say it's the kid you know talking smack or using racist words on the game platform and then now, now dad's you know he's on his dad's computer now that computer's banned from all these developers games guess wow. what that kid's gonna get his butt kicked okay he's gonna get a spanking oh. he's probably gonna be you know what i mean because every <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the truth. It's like there's no accountability. If they wanted to add accountability to it, you could do it in in a month, you know, with the, <laughs> the software. Because if you get your GPU banned from all games that are Ubisoft, let's say, oh, Dad's yeah. going to find out and Dad is not going to be happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It's the truth. The hardware in your system, everything's traceable. They can block your IP address. Your NIC card has a MAC address where basically it's like an address that never changes. They want to ban it. I mean, can, to some degree, if you're putting threats out there, I, ca I get it. They're going to find you, right? They're going to figure who you are. And they're, you know, even with the anti cheats and all the, the way in which we report. Um, well, the behavior thing is what I'm talking about. Okay. When and they harass people, sure. they use racist mm -hmm. remarks openly on the games. Um, if there was accountability put in place, it would stop pretty quickly in those particular communities i'm just saying they could do it if right. they wanted to yeah they choose true. not to true that it's a touchy subject and we could go on right forever about about yeah. this which is one of the questions why i took it away i'm like oh, i don't think i'm gonna bring this question up because yeah this subject i think is um you know opens up a can of can of worms and there have been very uh, um, a, a ton of studies um, even when I was in school um, in grad school we had to study about video games and uh, the way in which it affected kids for a paper I wrote so yeah there was a lot of um, research that went um, in, even in the in the journals that have um, medical or psychological tracings to video games of why certain people acted a, a, a certain way so you know it's it's very controversial but 
glad we were able to touch on it a little bit today. Yeah. Um, did Riz, did you answer the question on whether or not you think video games influence? It's been words about things, so. Yeah, if you kind of. Yeah. Don't be don't be mean, or else I ban you. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, <laughs> and she will too. She's she's ul <laughs> ultimate mod. She will. She will. <laughs> she will. <laughs> Okay, uh, the next question, uh, a panelist with a question, it's Riz. Riz Aline. Okay, let's, we can, I guess we can kind of like lightning round this one a little bit, but yeah, my can. question was about consoles and uh, are you guys trying to, do you feel like you want to get more consoles or do you like what you have so far? Uh, we don't have a PS5. I don't know if we want to get a PS5. <laughs> we haven't had that conversation. Uh, I'll probably get one when the when the Slim comes out or something. You know. But yeah, it's just you know we're mm. trying to keep up with all the all the devices and the computer and the phone and where where are you mm. guys at with? Or my birthday. I'll, I'll start if it's okay. My birthday. Yeah, go for it. So post, um, post I'm not impressed with the on. new consoles. Just a all. second. Post the question one more time so I can put it in chat. Oh. Um, Share your thoughts on consoles. Okay. Consoles, how you feel? <laughs> consoles, how you feel? How do you feel? The consoles feel very sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll start with this one. Okay, um, I was on the fence about getting a PS5. Now, I knew there was going to be a new VR for our PlayStation, mm -hmm. and I was hoping it would work on the PS4, but apparently it only is going to work on PS5. But here's why I didn't buy one. Um, I do still play the PS4. I have the VR for the PS4. But to be honest, um, the console, they're not very impressive. With mm -hmm. the, By the time they launched the new console for PS5 and the new Xbox, they're already... I mean, my the, the, the systems I built for my kids that they have, uh, that they have is way outperforms the PS5. By a pretty big margin. Don't let the numbers fool you or the the big boast about oh it's got a, you know it's got what uh, PCIe SSD drive blah blah <coughs> loads fast. No 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 those, the, the specifications on the PS5 and the new Xbox is no good compared to any any system you could probably build. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So why why would I just have a paperweight basically? And then you got to buy all the new games that are PS5. I don't think any are compatible, are they? So, it's to me, it's a waste of money. I'd rather just yeah. buy it on... And I'll show you, I'll tell you why. Um, like Pac-Man, he mentioned Destiny. And I hate yeah. Destiny, and this is why I'll tell you I hate <laughs> Destiny. You end up buying the game four or five times, because every season, they nerf you. So everything you had that you wasted so much time progressing... It's worthless. Mm -hmm. And then if you're on console, you have to buy it all over again. Mm -hmm. And it's expensive. It's yep. like $59. It's not like, oh, it's a $20. Um, no, you're paying for the whole game all over again. Yeah, and, and I'll second this too. <laughs> like whatever game or version you get from Destiny, it becomes free later on. So <laughs> whatever well, version you get like or <laughs> DLC you get, Wow, you can still play the game, just not the new content. Yeah, you know what I mean? Content, You'll see yeah. it and it's like, ah, oh, you can't play, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is why this is what this is the thing that really pisses me off so about console pay. versus Tell. PC, okay? Preach. Give an example. Let's say me I want to play with Pac-Man. We're going to play Destiny, right? Mm -hmm. If I don't get PlayStation Network or you know, the PS4 Pass, whatever the hell they call it. It's like $12 a month or whatever. If I don't buy that extra pass, I can't even play with Pac-Man, even though I didn't buy the new content. So I can't even play online with other people unless I get the PlayStation Plus, mm -hmm. which is, you know, it's $12 a month. It's $12 a month, okay? It's a now marketing PC, ploy. It's a marketing no, no, the ploy. Same game, though, yeah. The same game, Destiny 3 or Destiny 2, whatever, whatever they're at. Destiny 2 on PC, I don't need to buy no special pass to play with him online. So mm -hmm. why would I play it on this platform that's going to charge me more every month? Makes no sense. Yeah, I'll even add there on to go. that. What's even worse now, 
Um, I've noticed that there are, like, the new generation games, the PS5 and the Xbox series, whatever, um, there are some games that are compatible to play with the PC. Now, here's a catch here. Like, PCs, some can play with the PS5s and the Xbox series uh, consoles, but they cannot, they're not compatible with the PS4, to play with the PS4 and the Xbox One. So, it's kind of why you know <laughs> it's, mm-hmm. you know it's, it's kind of odd they, they have the new generations they're compatible to play with like cross uh, to do cross platform or actually it's called cross generational um games so it has to stay within that generation and while the ps4 and the ps4 and the xbox ones only could stay within their um level so i kind of s- to me, that's I kind of second um, Johnny with that. Like, I was gonna get a PS Five, but I mean, there's no point of getting it if I still have my PS Four. You know, all working well, so it's just more and it's expensive. Mm-hmm. So uh, well, it's I'll, I'll... it's an op it's a it's a very optional thing. It's not really something that I'm really looking. Well, this to is getting. the way I, I like to put it to people on the fence about buying a PS Five. Have you guys heard of the video card called the GTX 1080? Yeah. GTX 1080, you know, it's, it's a, it came out five, six years ago. It was a really popular card. Then they have a TI version, which is even more. If you buy a PS5, it basically has that five-year-old GPU in it. That's the equivalent of the GPU processing power of a PS5. So I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not trying to, you know, if you want to buy, buy it. Be happy with it. But, like, it's not, it's not worth it to me. That's just my opinion. Well, the, whenever someone says that, though, like, I, 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 I feel like it's hard to compare because everybody with a PS5 has the same processing power. You know what I mean? And you, that's why you don't play against typically, uh, you know, unless you unless you want to like queue for PC pool on Overwatch, but you don't play against people on PC. So I, I feel that. It, it's it's kind like of hard NASCAR. To... Everyone has the same car, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's about it's about the driver. You know? yeah. It's not the gamer. You don't have to worry about beating good the cars. You just gotta worry about beating up the drivers. <laughs> like, <laughs> the days of the thunder, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I I know what you're saying, but I mean, but it, you know, it's a six year old video card. It's like, why would you put something? And it's not exactly that GPU, but it's the equivalent. You know what I mean? Um. There's features that are great about it, but I have a 1080 Ti sitting in my closet. I don't <laughs> have anywhere to put it because uh. you know I can't put it in one of my systems. They have way better GPUs in them. Right. I have a 3090 in the box I'm using right now, and I hardly ever use all the power of it. Mm. It's just why would you? I go back six years, you know. Anyway, that's that's the way I look at it. You know what I mean? Not that I would if I won one or something. That would be great, you know. But I'm not going to go out of my way to pay $12 a month just to play online as well. You know, that's that's a deal breaker. <laughs> I'll take it so. off your hands, Booty says. Yeah. Um, I don't know enough about consoles other than when my kids were younger and then, you know, and when they were growing up, um, we went from PS2s, I think it was, to Game Boys and then to Wii's and whatnot. So I only know enough about what, they do and how they play and i know that they would go back to the video game and you know trade in their olds with to to get credit for the news and things like that so i um and i think larzy said it um and as well as the illusions um you know i'm i pc through and through me i am definitely pc because that's what i i know best or know right now the only console that i have are is my switch that i just started learning to play now um you know I, I'm not the best with it with the with the Joy Cons and whatnot. So I I can't even tell you guys what's best and what's not. So, you know, from my standpoint, PC all the way. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's see. Um let's see, consoles nowadays. I mean from back then till now, I gotta say that it does kind of meet like the demand depending on like, you know, our lifestyles because um especially uh, back then we had the Game Boys and everything. Like you know, we didn't have a cell. Phone. That came out before the cell phone. Am I am I correct? Or did the cell phone was it was, it was just 
getting the out Game there. Boy? The Game Boy? The Game Boy, yeah. The Game Boy, uh, the Game the, Gears. Yeah, the... Um, not till like... We didn't have cell phones till about 1999, 2000. Yeah. The very so, basic. Yeah, so it's kind of like a secondary thing back then. I mean, the, those kind of handhelds, I mean, it was a secondary thing. But it was actually a, it was a pretty good idea where they have, the, you know, where it transitions to having a cell phone. So now it go it goes from consoles a home console where you know most of the time everybody being at home or most people being at home when they play and going towards you know playing on handheld on battery well most of them have batteries um now getting into the cell phone age now that became you know the mobile thing became a big thing now from then on you got the switch so it's just where you could actually, you know, play it on the TV or, you know, just play it on the road. So yeah, I just feel cool. that the consoles, it just, it, it does meet, you know, our lifestyle. So that's, it's, which is kind of interesting because I mean, it, it, it's, it's proven profitable and, you know, so far the Switch is one of them. Well, I think it may be the most successful console ever made considering it's very um, versatile, it's versatility. Mm-hmm. And um, it's just the technology nowadays. It's just it's just incredible. I mean, we know we're going into the VR stage. You know, we're going a little more into the VR stage now. So, um, it's 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 just incredible how like you know the technology and you know video games have um, like evolved in a way where it just becomes like like it becomes p- more part of our lives. You know, rather than just something, you know, just you know, having to, you know, stay at home for. You know, it's it's just it's always with you. Like I said before earlier, I bring my Switch to work, <laughs> but I don't play it like entirely at work. I I know my thing. <laughs> I, I know my role at work. You better not. But it's, yeah, you know, but it's it's just it just becomes more part of our lives now. It it, it which is crazy. I mean, it could either be on a console like the Switch, or it could be on your phone. You'd be playing Call of Duty on your cell phone for all we know. You know, it's, it's 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 incredible. Oh, I love all the little tidbits. Everybody, Larzy, Illusions, Voodoo, you guys are adding some great <clears throat> knowledge there to to Twitch. Um, but yeah, so um, I think we're all kind of in agreement. Switch right now, so far, is <laughs> the best uh, console out there. I just feel like there's, you know, it is all mostly marketing, as you guys know. It's it's like it's like. Disneyland has to reinvent itself every seven years. I mean, consoles pretty much have to do the same. They have to reinvent themselves to be able to stay ahead of the game, to, you know, to to be able to outdo their competitors and whatnot. And it's all marketing. So, you know, if you buy into the marketing and you need to, you're one of those people that have to have, uh, the must-haves have to have this, you know, mm, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying neither here nor there that it's bad. I'm just saying that it's just, you know, you just have to kind of weigh your, pros and cons you know where the apples and or oranges and see which is yeah. best for you mm-hmm. I, I think that it's it, I, I used to think it was so funny you know I think back this conversation makes me think back to like 2019 when like I first got onto twitch and that was like not long after I bought my first like decent PC I, I was always like a Mac and console person most of my life right so I'm actually relatively new to the PC game, um, and uh, and then I got on Twitch, and I and I would just laugh, seeing all these like PC hardcore like people with like fifteen hundred dollar rigs, and they're streaming Twitch things. All <laughs> right. Oh, <my>, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got all this power. It's so much better than my 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 than a PS4 or whatever. <clears throat> So I could stream Twitch things. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, so that, mean. I, I mean, I, I just, I would just think that's so funny. Scene. No, I mean, hey, that's totally cool. I'm just, it's just what's funny is that like, um, uh, I, I just, I never really, I, I know that PC is such a money sink. To right. Me. That's what I always looked at it as. That's why I kind of avoided it most of my life, because there's just so much to it, and and like. People with these legit setups have like four thousand dollar rigs or more, right? Mm. So <laughs> that's that that that's. I mean, if if to me console of like console is for 
for uh, uh, you know uh, us us budget people. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but we need Nothing to be a budget that. gamer. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Just uh, before we move on, actually a quick shout out. I mean, I I know we talk about the Nintendo, the Switch, and everything, and the Game Boy, and everything like that. Just a quick shout out to the PSP, the PS Vita along the way, because those uh, portable handhelds actually were a lot, they were made um, ahead of their time, you know, honestly. Um, if it weren't for that, you know, it, it probably wouldn't influence the Switch. So, I mean, uh, it's very, to me, I think it's very underrated to me because I've, I, I've always wanted to try out the PSP or the Vita. Like, I've always wanted to own one, but I feel like there wasn't enough marketing you know, for me to get it because I mean, the only time I actually hear about the portable, uh, portable P- uh, PlayStations or the P- uh, PSPs or Vitas or whatever, is from people. I mean, some people already know about it, but like it, it just wasn't like I, I. To me, it felt like there wasn't enough marketing for it, and that system was way ahead of its time, even before the Switch. So I thought that may may uh, influence the Switch a little bit, especially how games were played on it it was it's just you know it's like a literally you have a tv and <laughs> and it's like you you play rpgs on a on a um on a handheld i mean that's just incredible there so mm-hmm. yeah just a quick shout out to those uh consoles i know you didn't want to leave them out so <laughs> but yeah okay <laughs> so i think everyone answered that question right about mm-hmm. Yeah, the way about the console. I'm not knocking consoles myself. I mean, I have some consoles. I think what really bothers me is um, the old game consoles. I have a Genesis in the wall there, Sega Genesis Model 1. You could take that anywhere. You could take it to Big Bear with no phone line, no internet. You could play the games. The games are completed on the cartridge. They don't change. They don't let you make you log into something. Um, where you hear a lot of people complain is a lot of the games now, you have to log into their service to even play the game, even mm-hmm. if you're playing by yourself. Mm-hmm. So let's say their service goes down, they go out of business, whatever. You can't play that game anymore. <laughs> That's what sucks about the new games. That's just my two cents on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very true. Yeah. And even if you just want to play not even – play co-op you just want to play to progress it's a progressive game you know you have a a progression of your character whatever you can't even do that if there's networks down you're down basically um it kind of sucks i I wish they wouldn't make it that way because a lot of people like let's say you're you're in the military and you're on a submarine for six months out of the year you got no internet you got no wi-fi this is the way to play the game you have the game you can't play it why because you can't get a signal, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. Think of the military console makers. Think of the military people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. I, I just yeah. wanted to add on that, Johnny. Is like you know, like these uh, these game consoles too, though, that have like subscriptions now, uh-huh. where you get these games based on your subscription, even though they don't require you to be online, because you got them through the subscription. Yep. Like you have to be online just to play this game, even like, like X Men Arcade. I got as a subscription through uh, on the PS3 way back oh, in the day. Oh, classic arcade! <laughs> Great game, right? That's but I couldn't classic. play it unless I was online, because yep. it was mm-hmm. through my PSN subscription. Mm-hmm. Uh. <laughs> and here's another thing too. Like I'm I'm using PlayStation Plus as an example, but. You know, a lot of people say, well, you're not only paying for the subscription, you get a free game every month or two free games every month. So do you have that's why they have to charge you. This is what sucks. Let's say I got five free games from having PS, PS plus, you know, PS4 plus. As soon as I stop paying for PS uh, PlayStation plus those games, I can't play any of them, mm-hmm. even though they were free. Because I stopped my subscription, those free games are gone. So. Oh. <laughs> free. Free. <laughs> so, um, so 
I think we have some more questions, actually, the panelists, but I, I think we, we all went through one question. We all had a turn uh, having one question. Is, mm -hmm. it, is it okay if we, we'll just end it like that then, yeah. or did you want to do the questions additional? No, I think we're fine. We're actually I'll leave it up to uh, In terms of time, I think we're yeah, really we're close to, to pressing. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. All good. Yeah. So for, for those of you who do have <coughs> questions for the panel, you know, please, please feel free to reach out to any one of us. Or if there's any topics mm -hmm. you would like to hear in future shows, please feel free to let us know. Um, we would like to, we'd like to hear from everyone as yes. far as your experiences. And I, I saw earlier, Brandon, uh, Earlier in the chat, mentioned Elevator Action, one of my favorite games <laughs> of the 80s, 90s. Amazing game, Elevator Action. Shout out, <laughs> Elevator Action. Nice. Yay. Thank you, everybody in chat for being so interactive and answering and posing some really good questions and good facts. Um, and just, you know, just... Um, putting out your knowledge there for each of us uh, to, to be able to grasp. So thank you, thank you. And uh, Voodoo, if I do get a PS5, mm -hmm. I promise I will send it directly to you. Okay? <laughs> if I get a PS5, it's yours. Oh, my goodness. Okay. It's on record. It's on record. It's on record. Forever. I do not want Everybody a PS5. Knows. It is yours. If I get if I get one, he has a PS5. Way, he says. Well, then you can have two. <laughs> well, too bad. Uh -huh. Hilarious. It'll become a PS10. I want a PS5, man. <laughs> give it to John. Give it to uh, yeah, um, um, <laughs> DJ. <laughs> Hilarious. All right, y'all. Um, well, I want to thank you all again very, very much. Everybody that was in chat, uh, that was here participating. Thank you to all the mods. Can we, I know we have a very special shout out for the mods. So can we get the, the mods shouted out for us as well? I want to thank Johnny, uh, freaking Rico for facilitating the podcast today. Um, and thank you, uh, DJB and Rizaline and Crazy Pac-Man. Welcome, Crazy Pac-Man, to the panel. Um, we had, I, this is, I, this is one of my favorite things to do, um, is to be able, uh, I just brainchild or brainstorm the ideas and throw it out there for the, for the group. And then, or not, this was not my idea. The video games was their idea. And I was like, okay. But, um, but in terms of the podcast, I thank you guys all so much for being here because without you, without your knowledge, without your input, without your, creativity especially Rosaline and dj for um the overlay the new we rebranded you guys a new overlay we have a new logo um just uh, for without without you guys you're the you are the foundation of mixed talk and i truly truly appreciate every single one of you um thank you chat for being here we absolutely adore you and love you like i said it, if we have any questions um, out there, y you feel free to pose any of the questions to each any any one of the panelists. Um, you can come and visit our, or you can post the questions here. We can pick it up later if you'd like. Um, but make sure you follow one, every single one of these panelists. They're awesome in their own right. Um, DJ, do you want to shout out anything that's coming up for you now in the near future? No, he has nothing to shout out. There's no kind of tournament of Valorant <laughs> of any kind. <laughs> <laughs> bam bam six except except that one is coming march first weekend of march y'all nice. bam bam is going to be dope it's back in oce follow us at, at bam bam league on all the socials tiktok instagram twitter myspace myspace my journal friendster zanga angel fire lycos asian <laughs> avenue patreon uh, find the pics yeah there you go thank you dj rizaline rizaline are you piggybacking <laughs> off of a dj yes I'm You're, sorry, what was that? Uh, Rizaline, are you piggybacking off of DJ B, or do you have anything you'd like to promote out there? Um, I don't do anything with my life. Oh my <laughs> good. Yes, she does. We're She's going lying. To We're going to do a music stream we, very I, soon, y'all. Yeah. Like, very nice. We keep saying that, but like this time, it's like it's it's a lot more possible. Yeah, we're moving into a new place, or that way we're going to be able to have a permanent <laughs> in this nice. place that we're at. So we're gonna do music streams way more often. Please I hold promise. us accountable. Yes. 
uh, coming April, we've already started talking about it. Uh, we haven't set a date yet, but we want to do another 12 hour music stream. Or, I don't know about 12 hours of just music. But Very good. A 12 Very hour good. stream uh, for our birthdays in April. Oh, and keep an eye out for that, y'all. Awesome. All right, Pac Man, you have it's anything to promote? To be all right, just real quickly, um, I am slowly getting out of my streaming hiatus, so um, I decided to go stream at least two days uh, a week, Thursday and Friday. Um, I've been playing a lot of retro games, so uh, I've been doing a lot of, well, I've been, doing some, uh, I've been planning a lot of throwback Thursdays and flashback Fridays, uh, but I might even put in like maybe a uh, surprise Saturday stream. So, uh, yeah, I'm just probably going to be doing like two streams a week. So, nice. Uh, if you guys want to, go ahead and follow me at me, Crazy Pac Man, at http colon slash slash twitch.tv slash crazy pac man. Here, I'll put it there for you guys. There you go. All righty. Johnny, you're up. What do you have to promote? Uh, if you like, check out my channel on YouTube under the same name, Johnny Freaking Rico. We just hit f over 5 billion views on my channel and wow. over 5,000 subscribers we're close to 5,000 I have a whole section if you want to relive the good twitching memories and songs I have a whole section with over 250 duets and some live streams actually of me four hours of twitch scene so check it out if you want to see some old school twitch scenes action I also have a video clips channel with lots of video clips from my favorite movies, TV shows that aren't on YouTube at all. So I have them up there. Check it out. Awesome. Thank you. All right. And uh, for those of you who are going to TwitchCon, it has been announced this year's TwitchCon will be TwitchCon 2023 will be in Las Vegas, Nevada. Yep, yep. So uh, in my Discord, if you're not following me on my Discord, please do. You can check me out. My, my socials are there. You can um, come follow me. Uh, we have a, an active community in Discord. We are posting. Um, we have a channel specific to TwitchCon that we're going to start planning. So if you want to be a part of that planning, uh, not so much committee, but just in 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 um, intertwined in the, in the planning, so we can meet up with you. We're gonna have a lot, a ton of meetups at TwitchCon. Please, you know, join my Discord, and we can start having the conversations there. I truly appreciate you guys for being here. I do just for just real quick on my streams. I am kind of back with uh, game nights on Mondays. We're starting back at game nights tomorrow night. Every other Monday nights now, um, we do movies in Discord on Wednesdays and then karaoke's on Saturdays. So that's kind of my stream schedule for now. But in the meantime, you guys, make sure you go follow every single one of these beautiful, awesome people and, um, you know, drop a follow uh, and, and go check them out uh, when they're streaming. All right, we're, let's, if, does anybody have any any particular person that we can go raid at the moment because we as yes. we do we pay it forward who do we want to raid um our good friend w wonders 3 is currently playing valorant oh okay let's go He's streaming valorant right now. all right let's go do that now if y'all uh here's the raid call please go copy and paste that we're gonna go raid our friend ww3 wonder what is that is that is or is it what is it can you guys w, put it? w wonders Okay, there we go. All right, you guys. W Wonders. I'll even shout them out. Wonders 3. All right, y'all. Have a good night. Have a great rest of the weekend. And for some of you who are already starting your work week, have a great rest of your work week. Stay safe. Everybody, please show kindness. Be kind to one another. Love you all. See you all soon. Peace. Thank you. See y'all. Yay. We're good. Oh, it says WW3 is not the right one. What is it? WW, w Wonders 3. W Wonders. Are you sure? Is he not playing anymore? Oh, okay. Let's okay, see. never mind. Uh, We're not going to oh, go bummer. raid Wonders anymore. Anybody else? <laughs> just, just disregard everything we just said. Let me, let me go look on my... I, I meant to do this oh, earlier. Oh, um, Meow too, actually. Oh, he's playing Pokemon Community. Let's go raid our friend yep. Meow too. Meow is awesome. He's an, uh, another community member. Um, we met up with him again over at TwitchCon. He's super awesome. He's a musician by right. Um, singer song... Not songwriter, but uh, he, he's musician, sings, 
All right, let me go. Let's let go raid. Check if he's still there. Yeah. Okay, he's good. Okay, good. meow to y'all. Okay, make sure you copy in that raid call. We're gonna go raid meow. We're gonna raid. We're gonna raid. We're Here we go. Bye, raid. you guys. Right. See you all later. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Here we go. Good night, all. Good day, y'all. Good morning, y'all. Happy President's Day. Here we go. Happy Bye, President's guys. Day. Bye. America. Uh, I'm America. America. <laughs> America. <coughs> oh, yeah. I could cough now. <laughs> I need a you stopped stream, too? Yeah, I'm stopping. Yeah, the stream stopped already. We already moved Are you over. Kidding? Oh, what's up? Oh, no. No. oh, yeah. He doesn't know us. Okay, we got to go tell him. <laughs>